Welcome back. I promised you in our last installment that I would show you how to create a VM uh, as opposed to what a VM is and I'll cover that in a third one I think. Creating a VM is actually really simple. You do need some software for it. I'm going to use VMware Workstation here. Uh, VMware where has, um, well it's pretty much the leader or has been in the past the leader in this. Microsoft has a similar product. VM has a product called VMware Player which they usually have a free version for. But if you're in a school, talk to your IT department. They are using virtualization of some sort. I asked for VMware Player to be installed on this new laptop, and they gave me something a lot more robust in VMware Workstation, uh, probably because it helps them support the systems uh, that I'll be creating. I use VMs for a lot of things, but I promised you today that I'd show you how to install it. It actually can go fair, fairly quickly. You see that I've got a VM here for Ubuntu. I'm going to make another one. This is Ubuntu 1, but all it is is file and new virtual machine. And we'll walk through the wizards. I'm going to make a typical machine because it knows what's going on. Now what's really cool about this is these three options. If you have a CD already, maybe you have a Windows CD and you're making a VM of Windows. Um, this would especially be useful if you're in Windows 8 or Windows 7 and you need to use a real version of XP or even DOS. So here's where your actual DVD-ROM drive is. The second option would be to use an ISO that you've downloaded or that you've created, and I, that's the one we'll use today. Because it's a file, it's much faster than reading an optical. And I could take this same ISO and burn it to CD because that's what it's designed. And then finally, you can tell it that you'll install the operating system later. Uh, it just it makes you a, a computer with a blank hard disk. And that's really good for testing things like booting over the network uh, because I do that as well. Uh, installer disk file where we're going to find it now with many operating systems it already knows and you notice it says here Ubuntu 12.04.2 detected this operating system will install with easy install it knows a lot of the default um, the default parameters that make this work and it, and it will automatically use those that way it, you don't have to do a lot of this I'm going to call this Ubuntu 2 that's also my username and I'll just put a password here. Oh, terrific. It won't let me have capital letters. So there are some restrictions, but that's within Ubuntu. And we're going to call the virtual machine Ubuntu 2 because I already have one. And that's a really nice thing. You can do this. Uh, you have multiple ones running. How much hard drive space do you use? I usually set it, let it set at the minimum 20 gig. You can always increase this later which is really nice, but you also don't want it to take up too much space. And then finally, do I store it as a single big 20 gig file or do I split it into multiple files? And that's one I always use um, just because it's the default. I've never found a reason to make it one file. I can customize the hardware, but I like to leave this at the default. The only exception might be that your network adapter is network address translation, so it's actually running through your regular adapter here. You might need, for varying reasons, to connect directly to your network. It can appear as a complete and total different system on your network. That's especially true for network booting, but it's not a huge deal. And then, of course, power on. I'm going to finish it. It's going to take it a little bit. It should give it to me a second. It's going to boot up just like a regular computer, and actually it is booting a DOS se or a, a BIOS session. It's going to tell me that I could use my webcam. And it's just giving me a whole bunch of other stuff. It will ask a couple of questions, but they're not a lot of questions. Most of them have to do with languages and keyboards, and it's going to find all that out anyway from your own system. It actually is it really well designed. Uh, the VMware, at least, the software is really well designed such that uh, it looks to your Windows settings, in this case, to figure out what you're doing. That's it. That's all there is to it in about five minutes, maybe ten minutes uh, more for a faster machine or more for a slower machine. You will end up with your desktop. That's it. Good luck. Hope you enjoy using VMs. I find them amazingly useful in class. Bye-bye.